How's it going everyone? It's Sam doing a bit of a different video for you here today, but we're going to be going through what you should be doing if you have $100 right now. And hint, hint, it might be buy some more Bitcoin. Now, I will say we're, we're, we'll talk about a couple other things that are happening right now as well. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. We're in the garage. Right, we're in the garage. I was just taking the dog out and I w I've been thinking about this. Uh, I saw someone else posting a video about what to do if you have $150 right now. So I thought, well, some people don't have 150. Some people have 100. And I want to give you my honest thoughts on what to do with $100. And this is no like, go buy Bitcoin no matter what type of situation. But we'll get through that. Um, again, if you don't mind, hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts on videos like this. And also... There's going to be a link underneath the video to Marjax in case you want to trade cryptocurrency. Now, that's not right for everyone, but you can get set up with the link underneath the video and start trading today. Now, apologize for the lighting and the sound. I think we'll make it through, but I uh, just want to do a bit of an impromptu video for you here. Now, first of all, the market fell down today. Bitcoin falling under 60,000, freaking some people out. We've seen open interest go up yesterday, and yet the price didn't budge at all. So some people have been thinking, some analysts were thinking that maybe we have been seeing longs opened as the price came down a little bit, and that people were getting a little bit aggressive as we were falling, which can be a dangerous thing because they can get wiped out. But uh, it is interesting to watch. A little bit of shake on the market. I think it's healthy every once in a while for us to go either up very quickly or down very quickly, wipe out the super leveraged players in the market. And that's just bound to happen over time, right? Uh, but it does keep the market a little bit healthier, right? If we go up forever, people get very long the market and then it, it can cause issues. We can see bigger drops then. Now, I will say CPI came in freaked out the market a bit, but CPI was 2.4%. I can't remember what it was last month. I want to say 2.6%. It was expected to be 2.3% headline. And everyone says, oh, it's higher than expected. You have to look at the chart though. You have to look at the chart and it's still much better than it was last month. I, I hate when people do the same thing with earnings, right? You can see, oh, a company was supposed to earn $3 per share and they only earned $2.95. I'm going to sell, it's bearish but maybe they grew earnings from $2.40 last quarter or last year. And people don't remember that analysts are wrong all the time. Analysts being wrong doesn't necessarily mean the company did poorly. The company can still be in very good shape and doing fantastic, but yet some analysts said, no, nope, they're gonna earn twice as much as uh, what they actually earned, and then it skews the data. Same thing with CPI, the expectations can be one thing, but what we wanna look at is the progression and it is getting better. So I'd keep that in mind. Now, also obviously the government changes numbers, so who really knows what the number is out there, but if you're just looking at it, I don't think this was necessarily that bad a month, to be honest. Now we have PPI tomorrow. We actually have the Tesla robot event happening probably as you're watching this. Uh, I'm interested to see what comes out of that. I do own Tesla, to be clear. So I will be watching that probably tomorrow, looking for the highlights tonight. But uh, again, I, I want to get to what to do with $100, right? Should you shove it into Bitcoin? Should you you know buy Tesla stock with it? You know, should you put in cash for the upcoming recession, whatever? Now, obviously, this is not a one-size-fits-all thing, but obviously... A lot of people probably have access to $100 at the end of the week, end of a pay period, they have a hundred extra dollars. So it is something that I think a lot of us think about where should we put our extra cash and it makes sense, especially if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to save some capital. Um, and I thought it'd be just kind of fun to go through my thought process. First of all, I know, I know Bitcoin does very well on average 50% a year. But first, even with knowing that, I'd still pay off any kind of high interest debt, right? If you have a credit card, let's say at 50% or, or not 50%, at 30%, right? If you have a credit card at 30% and you have some debt on it, pay, pay that off, right? Put the money towards the debt. Uh, there's no point in having high interest rate debt. I do that all the way down to six or 7%. Like you get $100, put it towards that, 
focus, grind, get out of that hole. Because I actually, I did see on uh, someone's live stream, someone that was, had thousands of viewers that's in crypto, they said, how much credit card debt do you have? And I think 40% of the people watching did have credit card debt, and yet they're still investing in crypto. So first of all, just pay off that high interest rate debt. Even if it's 10%, if it's 9%, I'd get rid of it. Minus maybe a mortgage, right? Just put it towards that higher interest rate stuff. Second, I would make sure that you're getting the company match, something that I think a lot of crypto people forget about or just, you know, they want access to their money earlier. They don't invest to the company match in their 401k, which I think is a big mistake because automatically you get 100% return. Now, if you leave that place, you know, sometimes they do uh, have a vesting period, but the companies I've worked at didn't have a vesting period and I could take that. Then actually I could invest it myself. So you get 100% match up to a certain percentage. And then you can actually roll it into other options once you leave. Like you could roll that into MicroStrategy or iBit or something like that. So those are the things I'd be doing first. Then, depending on your age and your risk tolerance, I'd maybe look at putting into something like Bitcoin, if you understand it well enough. Otherwise, S&P 500, all the way. Just put it there until you're in a better financial situation where you're not looking at every single $100, but maybe you, you're looking at $5,000, $10,000 that you have extra. But putting into something like an S&P 500 would make sense or something like Bitcoin uh, so that that way you understand it. You can focus on earning more money at this point, but you're still getting a good return. Now, obviously, Bitcoin's going to outperform the S&P 500. You can't really buy real estate at that point with $100, but something like Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin's a trillion dollar asset right now. It's a little bit higher than that, but let's say it's a trillion dollars. You can buy with $100, you can buy one ten billionth of the network. Tell me something else that you can buy one ten billionth of for $100 that can't, that can't be made more of, right? So you automatically will own one ten billionth of everything that's ever built or anything that is ever on Bitcoin, right? Now, that might not look like a lot of Bitcoin right now, but the fact is it still is going to be one ten billionth whether Bitcoin's at a uh, hundred. $100 trillion or $1 trillion. If a stock does that, if a stock goes up significantly from a trillion to a hundred billion or a hundred trillion, they might dilute shareholders. They might split off, right? There might be complications. Maybe they go bankrupt, right? Something like that. Bitcoin can't go bankrupt. I mean, people can sell it. It can go down in value, but I would consider maybe buying some Bitcoin because it is finite and they're not going to make any more of it besides the 21 million. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Obviously, then you can get into riskier coins as well. I know some people would suggest meme coins or altcoins or something like that, but you gotta have, you gotta be careful with those. Obviously, uh, if you just continue to throw a hundred dollars at at a lottery, right, uh, scratch off tickets, you're probably gonna lose most of that money. So instead, I would invest into something that you think is gonna be around for a while. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. I appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.